Well, I got a question from somebody about what inspired me to fish swim baits and, and, and things like that. And, and I grew up fishing a lake called Lake Sherwood my whole life. And uh, I always wanted to catch the biggest fish. I didn't care about catching two, three pounders. I wanted to catch the biggest bass I could. You know, that wall mount, that's, that's what I looked for when I was a kid. You know, because I could see it, guys catch them, and I was just in awe because, you know, I'm like, wow, man, big fish. Well, I worked at a tackle shop, and it was in the San Fernando Valley, and I think I was about 12. I started when I was 12 working on the weekends. My dad would drop me off, just Saturdays. And then I think I was getting in to be about 15, 16, 17. And then a guy named Marv came in from Worm King. And we had some of his baits on the rack, but he came in with the Worm King Dinosaur, which was a big rubber bait about that big. And uh, I was like, man, that's a big bait. And he, he was saying, yeah, he says, well, they eat trout, like the cetus and, and the stick, you know? He says that, uh, you know, we've had guys ask about this. And uh, so I took some the very day that he, he said that. And I didn't have a rod really big enough. I thought my Zero Spooks and things like that were big baits for big fish back then. And I got a hold of that bait and I fished it on my jig rod, which was stiff. And it was a Sabre, solid, thick blank, ambassador reel. In fact, it's in the case over here. And uh, I lost five bass in about a half an hour and every one of them was over 10 pounds. They would jump up, shake, and throw the bait. And from that day on, I just stuck with wanting to catch the biggest bass I could catch. And that changed my whole life as far as swim baiting because the, you know, that stuff came out, the AC plug came out, uh, there was big Rapalas, which I did catch a couple of nice fish on those, but they, they still looked a little phony. And then it just evolved into all this good stuff, you know, this, this uh, Osprey Optimum kind of baits. And then I learned how to pour my own stuff, you know, because guys would come out with baits and beautiful bait, but it doesn't swim. Or what an ugly ass bait but it's beautiful. Why can't they just go together, you know? So I started making my own baits and then I started catching these big fish on my own baits. But I always knew that when I caught a double digit fish, even if it was a nine pounder, even if it was an eight and a half pounder, when I came home and I ate dinner, I talked about it. When I went to work the next day, I talked about it. A week later, I talked about it. Okay, but I found that when I caught a limit of three pounders, or even if I caught a 25 pound stringer, well, at dinner time I can talk about it, but by the next day or two, it's completely gone out of my mind. You know, it's something like, you know, it's a week later, you're at the tackle shop, well, I got a 22 pound limit at the lake with a four and a half pound kicker instead of being able to go into the tackle shop a week later and saying, yeah, last Sunday I got an 11.5, you know, check the picture out, you know, there's a big difference. And so from that point on, I figured do or die, you know, I live by a lake, I have time to fish, I would rather go and get, I, I could get my butt kicked throwing other stuff. So why not just go for broke and go for big fish and, uh, and, uh, cut my losses and then learn from that, build on that. You know, that, that, that's sort of how it all started for me. I only had so many pants and so many shirts and so many hats, but I had all these fish, and, you know, and you could see how poor I probably was because I couldn't change my clothes every week to show you a different kind of shot, but I had a different fish. And a guy named Kenny Huddleston told me, you know, after I sent him the 128 folder over 10 pounds that year, uh, he says, you need to put a camera in your boat. And I said, yeah, he says, yeah, he says, you know what, you need to put a camera in your boat. And I said, why? 
And I'm naive to the internet. I didn't even know what an email was back then. My kids taught me all this stuff the last few years. And he says, because the peanut gallery, well, what's the peanut gallery? Well, the peanut gallery, these guys that, that look at the fish and count the scales and the dots and the sores and, and they say, well, you caught that before, you did this or you changed your clothes and, and then you took a picture of this fish again. And I'm like, they really do that? And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, okay. So I run down, get off work on a Friday, I go to Sears. They got a Sony Handycam on display. And I think it was a reconditioned one, you know, because I didn't want to spend the money for the other one. And it was a high eight video. And I bought it. And I came home and I looked at it. And I looked at the instructions and it said, this is how you put the tape in, this is the battery, and this is how you turn it on. And I'm like, okay, I got it. Viewfinder. Yeah, okay. Well, tomorrow morning, I got to go out to the garage right now. Learned how to basically use it, ran out to the garage, took the pedestal off aluminum boat I had before, the, the cheap kind you got at Kmart is where I actually got it, the kind that go on the John boats. And I mounted that in with some drywall screws in the back of my boat, and then I mounted the camera on there so it would fit. In the morning, got to the lake, put the boat against the dock, turned the camera on, didn't know that the viewfinder flipped around so you could see yourself. So I got in the back of the boat to make sure I was centered. Took that camera out, got down to the spot, had a follower the week before in this one area, and it was a big one. Went right back to that area, and I think it was about my third or fourth cast. Within 20 minutes of having that camera on, but I made the cast, and sure enough, right over my shoulder, you could see me winding, and you could see the fish eat it right there, and it was almost 16 pound fish. Landed it, fought it, did the whole thing, got it in the boat, looked at the camera, thinking, you, can you see me in there? God, I hope you can see me, I hope that thing's on. You know, and I was so excited and everything, and and I, I called Kenny Huddleston and told him I had it, and I, he said, turn it off, take the tape out, put the red thing over, okay, what's the red thing? It's underneath the tape, and then package it up, and I did. And then what happened was, is I started doing that more and more. And then I, was, I got on ESPN because I caught some of these 17, 16 pound bass on video. So I was, you know, here I am, I'm hooked on it, and I'm able to show you how it's done and what it feels like and the excitement because when you stage something you you can see it it's not in there you know but when you catch something and you accomplish something and you catch something that big that's live on tape well there's you can be a 50 year old man but you're going to act like you're 18 years old and big bass catches make me feel 18 years old, even though I'm 60 now. That was the beginning of me putting everything on tape and showing you that, you know, your peanut gallery, if that's what they're called, cannot dispute live and real footage. And Facebook wasn't around, GoPros weren't around, you know, so, you know, how do you, how do you argue this? Which some of them did, but it's like, you wanna see the timer? And then what I did, what I made sure I did every time, is after I made a big catch, and I caught a big one, on every tape that I have, I would do a complete 360 in the boat, so that that way, if one of the peanut gallery says, well, there was somebody out there that you threw your line into and they hooked the fish on. Okay, let me show you the tape. And it'll show you, and it'll show you the timer. Once I have that fish, I do my thing, and I put it in the live well. I do a complete spin, and you can see there's not a soul on the lake but me. And then I would pack that, put that tape away. Then I would, at the end of the day, I'd have another tape in there, and if nothing happened, no biggie. But then I would plug the other tape back in, and I would make sure that I let the fish go in front of camera and let it go. 
So that way the peanut gallery can't sit there and say, you're killing all your fish, you know, uh, whatever, you know, I've heard it all. So, you know, I documented it all the way around. I was, and I can honestly say that, that what I did was cutting edge at the time. And I truly believe in my heart because of the video stuff and having the passion to want to catch these fish and feeling that excitement. Um, it just, it changed everything because obviously GoPro's out now and cast and catch is, is cast and catch. Story cut short, big fish make me feel young. That's why I target them. Puts Brown out. See you, doctor.